Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. We got a lot of requests for this one. It's how to sing with compression and vocal fry. Now, it's kind of an interesting subject for me because I've been discussing tr compression for like over 25 years now, and it's interesting to see that it's finally come around on the internet. Now, I don't know if it's people that have seen stuff that I've you know talked about over the last at least a decade, and they're regurgitating that or whatnot, but I think the most important thing we can start with is that no matter where you get your information, and especially on such a sensitive subject like compression or distortion or vocal fry, make absolutely certain that that vocal coach themselves can do it and do it well, and that they demonstrate other students that do it and do it well. And I'm not talking about just one little line or you know a ditty or 10 seconds here. I mean full-blown three, four minute songs, and preferably, I mean, that you've seen that they've toured and that they can do this in sustainable 10 songs, 11 songs, 12 songs, four or five, six nights a week for years on end. Now, why I say this is because we have a lot of people that have lost their voice. In fact, most people, especially in the 80s and the 90s, uh, that used a lot of compression, have lost their voices completely for lack of knowledge of how to, how to do this correctly. So let's start there. But so how to sing with compression? Well, let's identify first what compression is, okay? It's the concept of compressing air in the glottis. It's called glottal compression or hyperglottal compression. Now there's lots of ways that people go at compressing a sound and we're gonna get into vocal fry in a minute because there's some do's and don'ts with that. But the very first thing I want you guys to identify is, is that it's not just that you can compress air and squeeze off a note and sound like you're singing through a straw or something like that. You actually want to be able to take this idea of holding back the air and compressing that air because the overuse of air is the kiss of death to your vocal folds. It's like taking a flamethrower of air to your vocal folds, dries them out pretty quickly, then they become swollen, then you lose good chord closure, and when that happens, then all of a sudden you start ramming more air just to get phonation or sound, and it becomes this vicious cycle that repeats itself where you find yourself going hoarse after three, four, maybe five songs. Especially depending on how heavy you sing, this becomes exponential, um, depending again on how much distortion or how much compression you want to use. So, but let's discuss what compression is. So compression is the idea that we hold our breath like I'm doing right now. Now you probably don't realize I'm doing this, but I'm holding my breath and I'm talking to you at the same time. Now if you're really acute and keen, you can really hear that it's not like when I'm talking to you like this and expunging a bunch of air, I'm actually holding my breath back and doing this. So you start on that premise, but it's far from the only thing we do, and let me explain why. By the way, I have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, and I cover all of this thoroughly in my singing course. It's not something I can cover all right here in one quick tutorial, but at least you'll get a flavor for what I'm talking about so that if you do decide to take your studies further, uh, it will really help you understand why this is important. Now, so we have this, this concept of cutting back the air, and it's not just that we can control or stop the air itself, it's that we've worked in good open throat technique, or the idea of keeping the throat open, the tongue drop, the throat open, that we don't literally gag on our vowels or you know start sound like we're heaving up our vowels or like I said, singing through some tiny little straw where we're pinching and squeezing and choking off the notes. See, that's what most people do when they sing, especially if they start to sing loud or belt or want to sing heavy with distortion, is they and they just kind of pinch and squeeze and, and that. And that is a form of compression, not good compression, but it's a form of compression. What you want to do is you want to work in a daily regimen of scales that allow you different vocal techniques or vo open throat techniques for vowel placement, of getting your vowels placed well first with strong diaphragmatic support, and then once those vowels are placed, you can gently start to lean into a sound or kind of pushing into it a little bit to start to develop, start to, to develop this compression. Well, this is also important too because we don't want to go straight from a clean sound to a distorted sound. We're going to really hurt ourselves. And this is this is kind of crazy, guys, because like I said, I can't t express this enough. Be careful where you get your information from on the subject. People can parrot things. They can read something on the internet. They can see someone else's video and try to regurgitate that. If they can't really do it effectively themselves and don't have other students doing it, run like your hair is on fire. Because this subject 
It's an extreme sport, especially if you take it to its distorted uh, components of it. And if you do this extreme sport and you light your hair on fire and no one can tell you how to put it out, you could, uh, you could really seriously damage your voice. Now, even in cases like Adele, she uses a form of compression and she's going through two surgeries now. The first one she's had a while ago and now she's going through a second. Of course, I know she smokes a lot, I know she drinks and some other things like that that contribute to that. But also though, it's just from singing incorrectly and we've seen a lot of surgeries lately as a result of this. So let's get back to compression. So we want to have really strong diaphragmatic support. Again, I can't stress this enough. If you haven't seen my video on that, check it out. Again, it's in my singing course, an ex hugely expanded version of that. But what we wanna do is like I said, we wanna learn to hold back the air, kind of like we're talking underwater. Hey man, how's it going? Blah, blah, pretty good, what are you doing? Blah, blah, not bad, all right, cool, right? But we don't wanna end it there because we don't, like as in the case of vocal fry, where people go, eh, eh, eh. Congratulations, all you did was choke off the cord, okay? Now I'm not dissing vocal fry, but I wanna emphasize this. Now, that might be okay to understand the process of starting or initiating wanting vocal distortion and you start with fry to kind of get the feeling in the throat to hear how it sounds or whatever and then you get away from that sound and you open up the sound. I want to give you an example of this really quickly because I think this might help you. One of my students, Gabriela Gunchikova, uh, came to me many years ago. She was in a band called Maryland and she did a Nazareth song. She was a wonderfully talented person on her own. However, Gabby will be the first to admit that when she came to me, she was losing her voice every single night and only able to sing about three or four songs. So I want to play this Nazareth clip for you right now. Check this out. No scars, no and marks, any hurt, no time, oh strong, Yes, radio Hello. in Australia. Can you tell us a little about the influence of Ken Tamplin on your music? And have my range and my my technique. It would just work. I would I would be losing my voice. And that time I had a problems with that. I was I would sing for an hour and I would lose my voice. This is something that's not happening anymore because I'm 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 trained. And uh, for rock singers especially, it's very easy, very easy to lose the voice when you scream and you, you use so much of distortion. Okay, if you see, you'd say, the average person would say, wow, man, that was cool. Ken, what are you talking about? I love that distortion. Well, if you get a chance and you go through all the videos that I've done with Gabby and you see how much we, I've opened up her voice to, to maintain wonderful distorted sounds, wonderful compressed sounds, but the roaring lion of openness, number one, the ability to control the air, number two, and the range that she was able to get from not closing or clamping or crimping down, like I said, singing through a straw, you know, closing down and choking off the chords, all of a sudden she has a range that she never imagined she could have.
comes through a series of exercises that I have in my singing course where you have to continually do on, on all your vowels too, do these different open throat techniques to first initiate open throat and then gently start to lean into this sound. Now, back to compression. So within this compressed sound, we start out very light on the compression. I don't mean light as in singing, I mean not using that much. So in other words, if I go, hey, right, I'm, I'm holding my breath, hey, and you can kind of hear me cutting back the air, right? Well, there's a, there's a deception in this, in that, and I'm gonna talk about this when I do a, a video on belting as well, that there's an idea that it sounds like when people are using distortion or growl or anything, that they're just, the blood is coming out of the throat. It's like a throat bleed kind of a sound, right? It's actually the opposite. It's that we built up such quality resonance with the voice, quality resonance with the sound, that the voice has gotten bigger with less volume and less air, okay? So let's do this again. So you can do it with me. Hold back the breath and go, hey, I'm home, um. right? You can hear me compress the sound. Now I could use a lot of air and not compress it at all. Hey, ha, home. You hear all the air that I'm using in the sound? Like I said, that's the kiss of death. It's like taking a flamethrower of air to your vocal folds and you only get four or five songs that way. So anyway, so as we start to compress this sound, hey, over time when we sing and we maturate the voice, and I don't want you guys doing this the first week, second week, third week stuff. Come on guys, think about this. It's like going to a gym and working out. We're growing muscle structure here. You don't get to be the rock overnight, right? You gotta go into the, into the gym, you gotta work out, you gotta do this stuff correctly. So you go, hey, and then you can kind of lean into it a little bit more. Hey, hey, hey. Now, the genius of compression is, is that it develops a beautiful tone, kind of that whiskey <laughs> kind of sound that happens around a voice of a singer that's been singing a long time. You say, man, I love that guy's tone. He just has that smoky, woodsy, lightly gritty, distorted sound. I want that sound. It comes from doing this this way correctly, right? Now you could end up, you know, like a Bruce Springsteen, you know, born in the USA, I would, you know, have this like overly distorted, really unidentifiable, not, uh, not sexy, beautiful, just kind of powerful middle America kind of sound. That's one way to approach it. Or you could have a lot of versatility in the sound with different layers and shades of this compression, like I've demonstrated over and over and over again in many of my videos, um, where you can use certain amounts as much as you want. You could be clean on the sound, you could be a little dirty on the sound, you know, hey! be like really dirty or even like the growl videos I have, check those out where I'm just like opening up, uh, you know, some of the false vocal folds, relaxing those and just really leaning into a sound, um, you know, to kind of scream or do scream. So anyway, again, you guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, uh, where the proof is in the singing. I want to touch one more thing on Fry. I forgot to almost mention this, is that you can start with Fry to understand the concept of distortion. That's okay. But you don't want to stay in Fry because if you stay in Fry, then you're, again, squeezing or crimping or clamping up. Hey, you got this really instead. Hey, yeah, yeah. You don't have that really nice open thing that you can come alongside with a big open throat sound in order to, to give you what you're looking for with compression. Okay? Thanks again for joining me. Ken Temple of Vocal Academy. Stop by my singers forums, man. We got 11,000 people in there now. It's grown like a weed. Um, if you like and want to check out my course, How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, Ken Temple of Vocal uh, Check me out on Twitter, Facebook. I'm all over the place. So until next time, guys, peace out. Hey, keep my